Hello, I'm Mike Lercell. I'm the Senior Director of Lithography, Metrology, and Nanodefectivity at Semitech. We're a consortium. We're supposed to be working with the industry, making the industry successful. So it's, it's often the case of how do we bring competitors together to work in a pre-competitive or non-competitive space. And that you know, historically, if we look across the history of Semitech, has really helped enable a lot of the major industry transitions. And so what we're really trying to do is continue that trend that you know, there's plenty of challenges in the semiconductor industry. How can we bring people together to try to make sure that we get over those major challenges? One of the things we really look for is making sure we have and you know, keeping the industry trends moving forward in all of those different areas. So, you know, managing partnerships, looking at fundamental research that needs to be done, bridging some of the gaps between that and manufacturability. Um, it's, it's an interesting job to try to keep all those together. The good thing about SPIE and advanced lithography is there's so many different things going on at once. It's kind of hard to cover all of them. Uh, but clearly around EUV lithography, so the major efforts in uh, mass blank defect reduction, that Semitech has a number of different items going on this year. Um, big monitoring of the EV source progress. I mean, that's clearly the session I chaired yesterday morning. It was totally full, even at 8 o'clock in the morning, clearly indicating that people are really watching those, those uh, very closely. Clearly, the EUV mass blank defectivity, and how do you detect defects that may be buried inside the film stack, uh, the, the multi-layer film stack? That's one where you might need a different method, or it may even change depending on whether you have a pellicle on top or don't have a pellicle on top. So. Uh, Definitely some interesting new challenges there that people have spent some time looking at and we're still probably looking for the manufacturing solution. But typically you see this trend in number of papers increasing with the new things and then as it gets competitive you actually see that drop off. Like you see almost no papers on 193 nanometer immersion because that's mainstream and people consider that not something they would want to publish on. And so I think we're still on the ups curve for DSA. It's just interesting to see how many papers are on DSA this year. Uh, a lot of different subjects. It'll take some time to sort out exactly what, what, who's doing what and, and uh, how the trends are progressing. But uh, certainly a big um, increase in the effort on those types of technologies. And the topic of DSA, that would be a prime example where there definitely looks like there are some new defect mechanisms that didn't exist before. But I think uh, in general there are some defect mechanisms that are more of the, 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 the bottoms up as opposed to the tops down. So you start to see things like nucleation defects. And those become more prevalent at smaller dimensions, you know, pretty simple. It's just the time it takes something to grow, shorter time, smaller defect, more of these things occur in shorter time frames. So you start to see this trend where you, there are a large number of very small of these like nucleation type defects. How these uh, small defects are transported and how they stick to surfaces and how you remove them, as you get down to these very small dimensions, you start to see other forces dominating. As these uh, defects are flying around in like process chambers, it's, it's not gravity that is the, um, the main do dro uh, dominant force. It really are many other things on um, controlling the motion and, and the adhesion of these types of particles. I think there's certainly some big gaps in the metrology space where people would like to do something and so they end up cobbling together hybrid metrology in various forms in order to try to be able to you know, either find defects or control their process or, or, or many types of uh, applications like that where they're looking for a solution trying with what they have and that's becoming more difficult in order to not only find the defects but also control processes at those dimensions. Certainly the devices and device um, materials are driving a lot of the innovation and some of the improvements on, on device technology. Uh, and so I think it, I would agree it's probably not just shrink driven uh, performance, uh, but lithography is still a major driver because anything you can achieve in terms of shrinking your dimensions or increasing the density, you know, even if it's not the traditional linear density increase, but other methods of two-dimensional compaction or going to much more gridded layouts, that becomes a way that still becomes a huge driver in the industry and if it weren't a huge driver in the industry, people wouldn't be spending billions of dollars in lithography equipment every single year. I think focusing on the difficult challenges and trying to identify solutions is always better than trying to pick a winner. Uh, I've been around in lithography long enough, I've seen enough lithography options come and go, <laughs> next generation lithography options that have never happened, so you know, picking a winner is always extremely difficult. The market's going to end up being the one picking the winner, and that's really, there's no way that we can change that.